Hello, uh, welcome to this video on electrophoresis. <clears throat> electrophoresis is essentially a separation technique for amino acids and peptides and fragments of peptides. Okay, here we have four amino acids, aspartic acid, lysine, tyrosine, and valine. Now, let's do one concept first. This is the general formula of an amino acid. Okay, there's the acid group at the right, and this is the R group. Okay, now what happens to amino acids in solution? And when they're solid, even, they form crystalline solids. The basic group on the left, the NH2 group, will accept a proton. And the group on the right, the acidic proton, on the right here, if I can rub that out and it's not working, the group here will uh, release the proton. So there we are, that's an O. Okay, so there you go. Now in this form, the amino acid is neutral, okay, and it's known as the zwitterion form. Okay, and very importantly, it is neutral. Now the pH at which a specific a specific amino acid is neutral. Is called the isoelectric point. Okay, that's the pH. The isoelectric point is the pH at which a specific amino acid is neutral. Okay, they're not all the same. For example, aspartic acid has an isoelectronic, uh, isoelectric point, a PI is 3. So at pH 3, aspartic acid is neutral. It is in its zwitterion form. Lysine has an isoelectric point of 9.8. Tyrosine has an isoelectric point of 5.7. And valine has an isoelectric point of 5.96, very close to 6. So at pH 3, aspartic acid is neutral. It is in the zwitterion form. Lysine is neutral at 9.8. Tyrosine is neutral at 5.7. And valine is neutral at 5.96. The, these are the pHs at which they are neutral. Okay. Now, uh, we don't want them neutral. Okay. So that's the whole point. We're going to use a, um, a technique called electrophoresis to separate them on the basis of the charge of their charge. Okay. So I want them all neutral. Okay. Or I want some neutral and perhaps some, uh, some uh, charge so I can separate the neutral from the charged ones. Okay. So let's get on with what's going to happen then at different pHs. So let's pick a pH here, an acidic pH of pH of 2, okay, and another pH, a pH at 13. Now at pH 2, obviously things are acidic, and when things are acidic, things get protonated. Okay, in other words, we add an H+. If things are alkaline, we will deprotonate. Okay, and that means we take away an H+. Plus. If you add an H+, plus, things are going to tend to get positive. Because H+, plus is positive. If you take a proton away, things will be negative. Okay, so <clears throat> that's very important. Let's have a look at what these guys here are going to be at these two pHs. So let me get rid of their, whoops, their isoelectric points. Hold on, let me... Stop the video for a second. Okay, sorry about that. The phone went. All right, so um, I guess what we're trying to do now is we're getting rid of these isoelectric points. Okay, so pH 2, what's going to happen? Everything that will protonate, well, sorry, everything that can protonate will protonate. So the basic groups here, whoopsie daisy, the basic NH2 group will protonate. Okay, nothing else on this molecule will protonate. This will remain protonated, as will this carboxylic group. Okay, so pH 2, this guy will have a charge of plus 1. Lysine, this will protonate. And the other basic group at the bottom will also protonate. This will remain protonated. So at pH 2, lysine will have a charge of plus 2. Tyrosine, this will protonate. And that's it. So tyrosine will have a charge of plus one. And valine will protonate here. 
there we are like that and this guy will have a charge of plus one okay now ph 13 everything that will deprotonate and i've got to get rid of my protons now everything that will deprotonate will deprotonate okay so let's have a look oopsie daisy that didn't work out too well let's change that go back a step right what's going on here my screen has gone blank which will be very annoying all right the computer for some reason is really slow today so have i lost everything we shall see oh gosh look at that now there it is it's all back all right so now i want to deprotonate things okay so i'm going to deprotonate this aspartic acid there okay All right, I've deprotonated the NH2 group. I think I have anyway. Yeah, I think so. All right, I'm going to have to change that, aren't I, later? For some reason or other, my computer is deathly slow today. Okay, um, there we are. And I'm going to deprotonate that OH there. And deprotonate there and there. All right, it's speeding up now. Okay, deprotonate that, deprotonate that. This will also deprotonate down here. Deprotonate that and deprotonate that. Now that will deprotonate as well, that acid group there. Let's get rid of that and that. Okay, and this will deprotonate down here. Okay, I think I've done everything. All right, now let's put the charges in. Well, if they deprotonate, this is going to be minus and this is going to be minus. So aspartic acid at pH 13 is going to be minus 2. Lysine at pH 2 is going to be minus 1. Okay. Tyrosine is going to be, well, there's going to be a minus there. And don't forget this uh, phenolic um, proton down here is going to also deprotonate. So it's going to be minus 2. And as far as I can see, valine is going to be minus 1. Okay. So the, the take home message here is in extreme pHs, they're going to have charge. At their isoelectric point, they will be neutral. Okay, they will be in a zwitterion form. But don't forget, each amino acid has its own isoelectric point. Okay, so that's why we're using extreme pHs here to make them uh, charged. All right, now for simplicity, I'm going to give these guys their one letter code. So aspartic acid is D, lysine is K, tyrosine is Y and valine is v okay so that's i'm going to use that for a reason so let's move this up now and imagine now we have a mixture of amino acids we have a mixture of these four amino acids okay and what are they well they're d k y and v all right and now i'm going to put them through electrophoresis now very simply this is basically a filter paper connected to a power source potential difference all right so this guy here this is the positive side and this is the negative side so that means this is the anode side or the positive and this is the cathode side now i'm going to put my mixture dead in the center there it is okay so if the amino acid is positive it will go this way Okay, so when does it? When is it an amino acid positive? Well, in acidic conditions. So this is going to be my pH two. They're going to go to the cathode sign. If they're negative, they're going to go to the anode. And when are they negative? When they have been deprotonated. So this is going to be my pH thirteen. They're all going to go to the left. pH thirteen. Okay. Now, how far are they going to go? Well, there's two factors that determine how far how far they will travel, how far will they travel. Okay, charge is a factor, okay? So the greater the charge, the, the more it moves, all right, one way or the other. And the other factor is mass, okay? So the bigger, so let me try and make that a bit better. Charge, the greater the charge, greater charge, further moves okay now the mass the greater the mass 
the smaller or the less it moves. Okay, so we can enca encapsulate those two ideas and basically say, well, it's charge makes it go further divided by mass. So it's the charge over mass ratio that determines how far it goes. Let me give you an example. Let's have a charge. Let's say this is charge and this is mass and these are amino acids. Let's say this is amino acid X and this is amino acid Y. Okay, let's say they both have a charge of minus one. Okay, and let's say the mass of X is 100 and the mass of Y is 50. Well, the charge over mass is one over 100 for X and one over 50 for Y. In other words, Y will travel twice as far because this is half the amount, isn't it? Okay, so there's the ratio will give you an idea of how far they travel. 1 over 50 is a bigger number, so Y will travel further. All right, let's change the charge now. Let's pretend. Let's do positive charge now. Let's say X has a charge of plus 2 and Y has a charge of plus 1. Okay, now the charge over mass ratio for X will be 2 over 100 and the charge over mass ratio for y will be 1 over 50. 2 over 100 and 1 over 50 is about the same. Well, it is the same, but the masses won't be exactly um, 50, um, 100 to 50, will they? So if you have this situation, you would expect them to travel about the same distance. Okay, so it's charge over mass ratio gives you an idea of how far they're going to travel. All right, now let's put this very quickly into practice here. pH 2, they're acidic, they're going to go to the cathode. Now, which one's going to travel the furthest? Well, by the looks of my, my thing up here, lysine is going to go furthest. So I'm going to put lysine here. Okay, it's going to go first because it has a charge of um, plus 2. Okay, so this one is lysine and lysine is K. Okay, now the other three all have a charge of plus one. And so you're going to get sort of circles overlapping a bit here, probably. Okay, something like this. But the one that has the lightest mass is going to go the furthest. So I think, and even though I haven't calculated this, that valine is going to be the furthest. The least uh, traveled, I think, is going to be tyrosine because that looks quite big. Okay, and the, somewhere in the middle, we're going to get um, aspartic acid D. Okay, so the charge divided by mass gives you a, an idea of how far they're going to travel. Okay, now obviously, it's not going to be as easy as this, is it? It's not going to be uh, this one moves twice as fast as this one or... Um, or that because the masses aren't going to be nice easy ratios but it just gives you an idea how far they've traveled if they're exactly the same charge the one with the greater mass will travel less far all right going the other way going on the ph 13 side which one would travel the furthest well you'll get two here you'll get um, aspartic acid let me do a different color aspartic acid and tyrosine now they're both minus two so this is aspartic acid d and tyrosine is y they're both minus two so they'll probably go the furthest but as i've said before tyrosine is heavier or more massive than um, aspartic acid so it won't go as far i hope that makes sense now valine and uh, lysine valine is likely to go further than lysine oops that shouldn't have happened at all valine will go further than lysine they're both minus one but lysine has a greater mass than valine okay so that's how they separate okay now the only other thing that we can really do with this okay is have a look at a fragment of an amino acid so i'm going to very quickly draw this amino acid vs which is valine serine okay let me first of all draw valine valine is this Okay, and it has this CH, CH3, CH3, and then you've got the carboxylic acid bit. And serine, it looks like this with CH, and there's the carboxylic acid side, 
and I think it's CH2. Let me check. Yeah, it is OH. So this is the, I'm going to join these two together to give me the dipeptide. So to get rid, I've got to get rid of this bit in the middle and then literally just join them together. Okay, so what's this going to be in pH 2? And what's this going to be in pH 13? Right, in pH 2, everything that's going to deprotonate will deprotonate. So there's nothing here, nothing on the left, nothing. The only thing that will deprotonate here is this one. Okay, so imagine that hydrogen goes and it's going to be minus 1. So in pH 2, this dipeptide is going to have a charge of minus 1 at pH 2. At pH 13, what's its um, charge going to be? Well, everything that will protonate will protonate. There's a hydrogen, sorry, a nitrogen that will protonate. And anything else? No, I don't think there's anything else. So it's going to have a charge of plus one. Now, you might think, what, what about this nitrogen? This will not deprotonate because in this peptide bond here in the middle, the lone pair on the nitrogen gets pulled into a delocalized system with these pi electrons here in the C double bond though. So these will not accept a proton. Okay, this one doesn't accept. So this um, dipeptide here, oh, pH2, I think I've done that the wrong way around, haven't I? If it's pH2, oh, I think I have, yeah. pH2 is going to be plus one. It's going to protonate in pH2 and it's going to be minus 1 in pH 13. Sorry, I got that the wrong way around. I do apologize. All right, but this nitrogen here will not protonate. So this guy uh, will go in pH 2. It won't go very far, will it? Um, because it's quite massive. But it will go towards the cathode if it's pH 2. And if it's pH 13, it will go towards the anode. Again, it won't go very far, though, because, first of all, it has a relatively small charge and it has a quite a large mass. OK, now, interestingly, I'm, I'm sure you can see if you have VS, uh, valserine, valine serine, uh, that's one dipeptide. You can also get SV and VS is not the same as SV, OK, because it matters. The order matters in uh, combining amino acids because they will have literally different N groups. This is the N terminal, this side, and this side is known as the C terminal. All right, and it matters which one, which amino acids is on the right-hand side and which amino acid is on the left-hand side. Okay, let me stop the video there and post it as soon as